The global economy presents us at this moment with twin glots. The first glot is a commodity glot. The second glot is a liquidity glot. And the commodity glut has depressed commodity prices. And that decline in commodity prices has thrown some commodity producers, some commodity exporters, they have thrown their economies into a tailspin. And the, the outlook is that that situation is likely to persist. Situation in which commodity prices will remain depressed. However, the second reality on the global scene is a liquidity glut, which resulted from key central banks pursuing unconventional monetary policy. The liquidity glut is so much that it's, you have to accept that the world economy has never been this liquid. That the world economy hasn't ever, liquidity levels have never been this high. Because for the first time, negative interest rates emerged. Some countries, central bank policy rate is zero. In some, central bank policy rate is negative. And economists had believed for long that there was a non-negativity constraint on interest rates. The interest rate can take any value except a negative value. The excess global liquidity has broken that constraint. <laughs> so for the first time, we, are, we have observed negative interest rates. And uh, we've observed it sustainably. So while commodity growth that depressed commodity prices is bad news for commodity exporters, global liquidity glut potentially is good news for developing countries. Because you've lost export incomes because of the depressed commodities. The glut of liquidity on the global scene creates the possibility that you can attract foreign capital inflow to compensate for the capital inflow that you have lost to export. It's only a possibility. It's not something that happened without you doing anything. So you've lost the export income. It's not a possibility. It's a reality. You don't have to do anything for that loss to hit you, and the loss has hit you. But you can attract foreign capital inflow. You can attract massive foreign capital inflows if you take the right steps. Your economy is 400 billion plus. Yes, 400 billion plus. Borrowing 5 billion, borrowing 1 billion, borrowing 3 billion is a joke. It's a joke. It makes no difference to the kind of challenges you that you have. So it's not significant. You have to try and look for financing options that can make an impact, that can significant financing options. They are not yet acting 
like the giants that you are. Six trillion in revenue, six, seven percent of GDP is a joke. It's not enough. That total 6.6 trillion is not enough to meet recurrent expenses alone if you wanted, you know, to stimulate an economy, much less fund capital, you know. So what are the options of the Nigerian government in raising revenue? Is the situation as hopeless as the budget proposal is portraying? That, okay, income is depressed, we know it. That the only option that we now have is debt. So I want us to look at... So this presentation looks at options for locking resources to fund a big push. Nigeria does need a, a big push. And what are the options for unlocking the resources? First is cognition. We need to wake up and try and understand how to deal with the twin glots in the global economy. We have to deal with it. We haven't dealt with it. So now the commodity glut means that Nigeria has to manage the transition from windfalls to, to shortfalls. We were used to waking up and seeing that ha ah, revenue has increased. You know, oil price has gone up. For no effort of our own. Oil price rose from twelve dollars a barrel in nineteen ninety-eight to, if you like, $114 a barrel <laughs> by 2014, before the crash. Uh, yeah? So for no effort of ours, you know, the same 2 million barrels of oil we produce, and our revenue doubles, our reserves surge to $60 billion, and we didn't know what to do with it. You know, money was not our problem. <laughs> what was to do? with money. Now, those windfalls are gone. And the new reality are revenue shortfalls, foreign exchange shortfalls. Now have to manage that transition. We've done nothing, you know. So how could you? Then the second point is, since there is liquidity on the global scene, what are our options for unlocking liquidity to meet the shortfalls? We will discuss that and at least go home knowing that Nigeria has options. Now, whether those options will be taken up remains to be seen. But it helps us to define scenarios. See? If the options continue not to be taken up, uh, the government begins to paint a gloomy fiscal situation, which is at variance with, with reality. Reality is better than the budget is portraying. So we look at options for mitigating income shocks. We look at you know unlocking revenue, looking beyond oil taxes and debt. That, that oil export, export revenue, taxes and debt are not the only options. And the government, that was enough in the years of the windfalls. Export is government monopoly. The tax, the joint venture partners who have made in, uh, windfalls as well, and because of your high revenue prospect, you issue debt. Okay? The story has changed. That debt does not solve the problem of shortfall in income. What are Nigeria's prospects for raising equity rather than debt? Because debt doesn't give you a permanent solution, it's a temporary solution, it's a costly solution. Because temporary, because you must pay debt back. 
So it's just postponing the evil day. Costly because you must service debt. You don't service equity, you don't pay equity back. <laughs> you know, so if you as a company have the option of equity and debt, you can go to the stock market. You are, you are reputable enough that you can go to the stock market and raise equity. So why are you letting creditors downgrade you? Take that option. Then beyond equity, the other side of the balance sheet are assets. You are creating the impression, the way they talk about states, they are creating the impression that states are insolvent. What options do they have on the asset side? We are talking about net worth. The fact that you are talking about bailouts, you are talking about talking about them in negative terms, you are creating the impression that their net worth is negative. So federal government, what's the net worth of the federal government? What assets do they have? We are portraying, you know, we are not even bringing the assets into the conversation at all. So what assets do they have? Uh, what assets do the states have? And from which of these assets can they unlock liquidity? We experienced recession, devaluation, and inflation because we didn't have liquidity buffers. If we had liquidity buffers, there would not have been any recession. There would not have been any deflation, uh, inflation. There would never have been devaluation. Global economy presents two things simultaneously. Commodity glut that has inflicted problem on you. But they also pre present a liquidity glut, which creates potential inflows that could mitigate. Guess what? Saudi this May announced a 200 billion privatization program. 200 billion US dollars. So they had responded well. During the commodity boom, they created liquidity buffers that has helped them to withstand the shock. Now that they see that their liquidity buffers are fast depleting, they are trying to capitalize on the global liquidity glut. And they are privatizing 16 sectors. Where government had, you know, had 100%. So rather than trying to raise debt, when income prospects are dimmed, they are raising equity. So they're turning to the other side of the balance sheet. If you do get the, two, you don't have to get the 200 billion, any fraction. So while we are trying to borrow 5 billion, you know, restructure debt, they are beginning to restructure equity. You don't service equity and you don't pay investors back. You don't repay equity. 